In this clip, I want to talk a bit about block programming and JavaScript editing, and how you can switch between these two. And to do this, I'm going to make use of the PXT editor, because it, uh, that's an editor that has this functionality built in. And I'm going to need some kind of code, so I'm going to take uh, the same bit of code that we have used in the previous clip, uh, where we made a name name badge that shows your name. So then I have a forever loop and inside that forever loop I show a text, a string, which is my name. So this text shows all the time. And now if we look on the top of the page here, we see there's a button called JavaScript. So if we click on this button, we get uh, the code that we just made in blocks uh, translated into JavaScript instead. So if we take a closer look, we can see that we have this forever loop over here. And inside this forever loop, we have a function called showString, which shows this text. And there you can see the text is my name. So this is the exact same code, except it's written in JavaScript instead of blocks. And now we have a button up here that's called blocks. And if we click there, we go back to the block editing. Uh, so this is a way how you can switch back and forth between the two. Another good thing I want to show you here is that if you left click on a block, then you get some quick information down here. And if we left click on that text, then we get even more information on what this block is and how you can use it. Over here you can see that it shows uh, this function as a block. And right below it, you see the same thing as a function written in JavaScript instead. Um, so if we go back to JavaScript, we can see the function called showString in the documentation is the same name as we see in our JavaScript code. Another thing we see here is that in this case, we have uh, some more options when we program in JavaScript compared to when we program with blocks. Uh, because in this case, we can actually add a number uh, which changes the speed with which the text will scroll. So if I write a comma there and a number, and in this case, I've already tried it out before, and I know that 80 in this case, it's milliseconds. 80 milliseconds is a nice value to get a really quick text uh, scrolling. So you can see here in the simulator that the text scrolls a lot faster. But now we have a small problem. And that's uh, we used something that does not exist as a block. So if we try to go back to block editing mode, we get a pop-up that says, oh no, uh, we can't go back to blocks because you use something that does not exist as a block. So we get the option of either we lose uh, the changes we made and we go back to the, the state we had our code in uh, previously as blocks, or we stay in the JavaScript editor. Then I want to show you one more uh, nice feature of the JavaScript editing. And that is, uh, if you start writing your code over here, you can see you get a little pop-up that uh, helps you uh, find the functions uh, that you want to write. So in this case, I'm going to write basic, and it already suggests basic. So I can press Enter there, and I write a dot. And then it suggests uh, which functions exist inside of basic that I can use. So I can start typing show n of show number, and then it suggests show number, and I press Enter. And then it uh, automatically completes the rest of the name of this function for me. So it's a way of uh, typing uh, your code a lot faster. So now I can go in here and change change it to the number I want to show. Now I'm just going to remove this 80 over here so that we can go back to our block editing. And when we do that, we can see that we now have created another block just by writing the JavaScript code. So this was a very quick introduction to how you can switch between block editing and JavaScript editing.